G'day folks, it's uh, Jacko here, um, that is the Australian accent, my costume is just cringing at that, because we have got a fantastic, and I mean that this is like a one of those mind-blowing episodes that definitely needs a part two in my opinion, of uh, From Way Down Under, uh, Cole Clayton, who is an osteopath, practicing osteopathy, if I'm pronouncing that right, in the, cr- <laughs> in the, cr- in, I put a few extra O's, it's like, it's like calinesthetics, but um, in the cranial field, now you may or may not know what that is, Timbo? Brain, head. What were we talking about? Osteopathy is an head. interesting one, and this is one thing which, um, it's probably, like, as, as Cole mentions in the, in the podcast, it's, it's not perfectly well defined. Like, if you talk physiotherapists, you can talk about, this is specific what they do, often sort of thinking about musculoskeletal or the neural system. Uh, osteopathy kind of encompasses a little bit of, of everything, and, and as we would uh, affectionately say, a little bit of woo-woo, um, which we need to be not afraid <laughs> of, because basically what we mean by woo-woo is stuff that we actually don't understand about human physiology and neurology at, at this stage, but at some point down the line, research will start to shed more light on it. So it's not like it's uh, it's yeah. not it's not voodoo it's more about just we don't, probably don't fully understand the systems at play and, and that's what i think was the greatest thing about this conversation is we could have got super specific about some of the stuff that cole does and how his treatment processes work but we talked loads around just the complexity of the human body and starting to understand or to just appreciate what we know what we don't know where we can start to kind of look for different solutions and different perspectives on how we work. And, and if you're interested in kind of holistic well-being and health, then this is a great one to listen to. Mm. And if you're a practitioner who wants your eyes opened and just broadening your horizons of hearing somebody else talk very knowledgeably about their own journey and into some areas, which I've got to admit, I know very, very little about because I've never really been exposed to these sorts of things before. And there's always going to be new mm. things and new perspectives and, Jacko and I have reflected on this and said, actually, that's a real challenge for practitioners to be able to incorporate and encompass all of this stuff and everything that you know already. It's, but it's really good to have just listen to a conversation which is pretty organic and we didn't really have a huge amount of stuff planned. We kind of just let it go where it, went to, where it wanted to go and just see what resonates. And I think um, you, you, you yeah. definitely have a, a, a different perspective if you're in that practitioner field off the back of this podcast. Yeah, and there's definitely like the whole, um, the whole concept of the uh, when he's talking about like the the complexity of doing something like talking, um, being like one of the most like fine motor difficult things that we have to learn to do, and like how many tiny little bones and muscles and joints and things there are in our face, in in that jaw, the importance of like our teeth and all these things that we don't really think about and sort of probably just take for granted having our eyes open to like potentially how important these things are. And as Tim said, whether they've, whether they, um, whether there's sort of, whether it's quite new, um, the proofs in the pudding of some of the results that people are, are getting. And one of the, one of the, the, my sort of final thing that I loved about the conversation with Cole of what his approach was that he was very, very um, happy to go like, I haven't got the, all of the solutions for everyone. But I've got a network of people that if there's a, I might be able to recognize that, okay, they need to go and see this person. They need to go and see this specialist. And like, I'm just going to be like the, I'm sometimes it's, it's for me to try and help and solve it for other times it's for me to go, no, this is not my specialism. This is, I'm going to start to, um, put, connect people within, within that network. And, um, yeah, I think that's a great place for, for every, for people to be rather than always thinking that like. I've got the solution for everyone. It might just be that actually you feel fit part of that part of that puzzle. Um, and then final thing, if you like didgeridoos, I never heard someone, I want to hear someone live play a didgeridoo and why that might be important. Hold on to the end because um, Cole gets the big didgeridoo out. And uh, yeah, if you were, uh, obviously there's an experience there on the podcast, but if you want to, there's a visual representation of this. All of the podcasts are now on YouTube as well. So if you haven't yet subscribed, if you're not one of the 100,000 plus people that have subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then make sure you do uh, check out on YouTube. If you're watching this actually right now on YouTube, then thank you. But make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't done. All right, let's get into this one. Then. There's plenty to chew through. Um, this is a conversation with me, Jacko, and Cole Clayton, our cranial osteopath, all about cranial osteopathy. I've got that right, Jacko, with the right number of O's in the right yeah. places. I've got no idea how to say <laughs> that, word, that word. All right. Roll that jingle listen players (laughs) 
You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. So we are very excited to welcome Cole Clayton on to the podcast. He has not only brought himself and his amazing depth of knowledge, but also a didgeridoo. Um, and we'll get into why we might have that. Cole, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Uh, our awesome. uh, pleasure's pleasure all ours. We're really looking forward to this uh, to this conversation. And uh, just to sort of introduce uh, yourself to the audience, um, I will butcher the whole uh, osteopathy, osteopath, osteo, osteo, osteo. You got that right, Jacko. Did I get it right? Like, I've seen, I've that. seen an osteopath in the past. Oh, that's nice. Um, once and very much enjoyed that some people i know in the past have like confused these things have gone uh, with uh, like Ky- cairo osteo like that's all the same stuff isn't it like well uh just well, that's we can cover I think. yeah, yeah. We'll, we can clear that sort of stuff up all those misconceptions up but um who is uh cole clayton and and uh what have you how have you got to where you are today <laughs> yeah well <laughs> long story <laughs> but um yeah, I, I'm I'm an osteopath. I practice here in Byron Bay. Um, but I sort of I went I go round things topsy turvy back to front. So I started out at art school, <laughs> as anyone would, studying drawing and painting. Um, and then I find myself here. So yeah, I, I did a lot of work. I, after art school, I did personal training, and then I did corporate health, and then I um pivoted for a little while, actually came over your way, oh, nice. lived in Scotland for a bit, um, and then came back and did more PTing. And then I actually I actually met a dentist, so um, I was about to give up my – I did a lot of yeah, work yeah, with yeah. Paul Check, if you know Paul, like not necessarily personally with him, but a lot of his courses. Um, sort of classed myself as a Czech practitioner, I guess. And um, – I just, I don't know, I hit a dead end with it. And um, I, I, this one guy insisted to come and see me. He was like, I, I, I want to see a Czech practitioner. I'm coming to see you. And I'm just like, dude, you know, I'm kind of a bit wishy-washy with it. I'm kind of giving it up. And, like, <laughs> well, and oh, he no, was I a gotta dentist. See, I got to see. So he comes in. No, and, no, no, he was no. just a, a friend of a friend. Gaz, I still I still talk to him to this day. Um, and, um, yeah, he came, he came in and he had a, blown his shoulder out okay um and but he had a missing tooth on that side on that same side that he'd blown it out and i said dude like we can do heaps with that shoulder but we've really got to get your occlusion right before we um can really rehab it and and there's this you know the rule of three times something comes up it's worth taking notice so this particular dentist had come up yeah. three times like in the last week so i was like dude everyone's raving about this cat go see him and I wrote him a little. Can I just say I love, I love it. the fra- I love the, um, just the uh, the lingo in Australia. Everyone's been mentioning this cat. Uh, let go see it. Like that's that's nothing to you. It's, just, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's funny. It's good. It's good. Love it. Sorry. Well, well, actually, your mm. name is very Australian. Jack out. Get out, mate. Out. Like, uh, apologies. I should have put on my. Yeah, I'm we'll normally take, very good we'll with accents. I should have put on my Australian accent. Um, Normally, very good cool accents. Crikey, um, regular listeners are like, oh. they know I'm fantastic with accents, and I will put it on later. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so Big Tony, he just he just rings me up out of the blue. He's like, oh, I'm really impressed that you knew this was a primary dental problem. Come and talk to me. I was like, oh, yeah, dude. I'm like, okay. So I rang him back, and he's like, come to my practice, and I go into his practice and and I said, nah, I'm giving this up, man. I'm going to mow lawns and do maintenance and stuff. And he's like, he looked me straight in the eye and he's just like, I'd never forget this moment. It's pivotal, right? To the, and he looked me straight in the eye and he goes, no, you're <laughs> that was not. It. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. no, nah, dude, I, I am, dude. Like, <laughs> He's like, no, you're not. He said, come and watch me work. So I was like, he said, just give me two hours. I was like, fine. So I went and watched him work and um, it was pretty cool. Like he was, he was a really um, progressive practitioner. But what he showed me that day was this picture, right? And, and it's this picture of a girl. She doesn't look well. She's overweight. She, 
she looks like she's lovely, like a really um, awesome person, but she's just struggling, you know, she, and she was in pain. She was on a lot of NDAP, which is a painkiller, um, strong one, you know, and, and then he showed me this picture of the other girl and I was like, he's like, we, you know, what do you think? And I was like, yeah, well, that second girl's beautiful, you know, amazing, like real clear eyes, big, you know, smile. She looks well. She looks happy. He goes, it's the same girl. I'm like, no way. He's like, yeah, it's the same yeah. girl. I said, what, how, what? This is this is insane. And so that was like really pivotal was, was what he was doing was developing skeletal um, structures in the face and skull mm -hmm. to create airway. And that was what was killing this girl. She couldn't breathe. And so then I was like, yeah, dude, like I got to work with you. And so um, I forced my way into his practice and learned a lot of stuff from him and was exposed to a lot of different types of practitioners. And then um, I was exposed to my mentor and good friend, George, um, while I was teaching a course for this dentist. I was literally teaching a course for him. And George came along and I was, he said, oh, this guy's amazing, you know, he's the king of the osteopaths. And I was like, Jeez, <laughs> no pressure. And uh, this bloke walks up the stairs. He's like the loveliest guy you've ever met. And I'm like, oh, are you George? He's like, yeah, yeah. So he introduced me to osteopathy and then, what I had to do was I had all this like knowledge. I I I traveled the world like US and um, had amazing exposure to amazing lecturers, mostly out of America, he, that came to Australia and I went to the states. But I didn't really have the 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 scales, if you like, in terms of musically. You know, like I could I could riff, um, and I could. Do, come up with some pretty amazing different melodies and understandings, but I didn't have the, the formal background. So then at one point I was 38 years old and I was just like, hey, if I'm sitting here in five years and I haven't done this, I can't live with that dude. <laughs> so I turned around and just flipped the computer open. I already had a master's in clinical rehabilitation by that point. Flipped the computer open and applied for a double degree with a bachelor and master's combo in osteopathy for <laughs> five years. And so <laughs> smashed myself through that pain and agony for so five old, years. And how and old were you when you finished that? Yeah, so. Uh, wow. Um, well, that was last year. So I was nice. what, 44. Nice. I'm a yeah. big fan of collecting yeah. uh, so, educational certificates. I like it. <laughs> Oh, I've got so many. Hey? I've got, I got <laughs> two master's degrees in health and two bachelor's degrees. I'm done. I'm, I'm tapping out of collecting them for sure. But, you know, yeah, it's worthwhile. Like you guys have done them. You know, you know the pain of it. It's, but at the end of the day, it's like an initiation you have to have, I think. So now I combine and all through, like I put myself through uni doing breathing, um, retraining with kids and also orofacial um or I call yeah. it craniofacial rehabilitation exercises. So it's all these funny faces you can make to retrain muscles yeah. of the lips, face and tongue. So I do that. And I, and I, at the same time, George taught me cranial osteopathy and then I've got my exercise rehab background. So right here in this clinic, I do osteopathy, cranial osteopathy, breathing, retraining, and then I've got a little gym out here. So I, I really kind of mix cool. all of I those cranial modalities. Hmm. I'm going to ask you just to zoom out. Let's get into that in a second, Jacko. Just, yeah. I'm interested on, um, as you mentioned that, Cole, because you know when, you, when you've got practitioners who have been across a number of different fields, had exposure to lots of different people, um, how do you sort of see, I'm going to try and phrase this correctly now, um, how do you see like the human body, the, the, the physiology, the kinetic chain, the, the neural system? Like we, We've kind of, over the years as well, exposed ourselves to new things, and you start to, you, your horizons broaden, right? So one of the big sort of like, Game changers for us was probably spending some time with the guys in the National Circus in the UK who put us onto Z Health about um, brain based training and, and applied neurology and, and started to think more about vestibular and visual systems and how that's going to affect movement outcomes. And these are like, I think what's interesting around this sort of stuff is it's a it's a two pages of the textbook course that you learn about. We've got this neural input. It's a, you've got your afferent, you've got your integrative systems around the brain, and then you get a movement pattern. But no one really sort of dives into this side of these particular areas. And it's as you start to peel back uh, and you sort of spend more time that you then start to see how connected it is and then how complex it is. I mean, you're talking about fixing a tooth to, to get a shoulder sorted. Like most mm -hmm. people were just not in that space. I guess my question is very broad, but have you just got, what's your kind of like current, uh, context outlook on that sort of stuff of where we are at with understanding 
rehabilitation, the human body and how complicated it is because it's, it's hard for people to kind of go, I've got a shoulder problem, so I'm going to stretch this muscle. And we're going, well, it could be because you are you spend 10 hours a day sat at a computer for the last 10 years and your eyes are all messed up and your brain just has got no idea where your shoulder is in space anymore. Like I've thrown a load of stuff at you there. Just anything resonate on, on what do you think? Because I, I don't, it's very hard to kind of package that up into a very succinct question because it's, it's complex. Yeah. I think I get it, like because he used the word "we" as well, so he sort of said not necessarily what I, mm. um, where I'm at with it, but like where we all are with it. And I think right now is like an awesome time. <laughs> so I remember working in a gym back in, I don't know, 2001, and there was this guy came in on a cable machine and he started doing a little bit of rotation, and we were all sat at the desk, we're like. <laughs> <laughs> what's he doing you know <laughs> it was all machines you know like that's how we'd been taught as fitness instructors and then i i, I was so sick of it i was like this is bs and I, and literally i went i paid for a lecture another time i almost gave up i'd paid for a lecture by paul check and he got on there and he's he showed us like the importance of rotation he's like most people get injured in the frontal and transverse planes why, why wouldn't you condition in that range of motion like why well, wouldn't you condition just for those people, planes? For people like, who don't know Carl, oh. like Paul Chet was kind of one of the forefathers <laughs> of what we now term as functional training wasn't he he was very much into this kind of like yeah exactly. taking a bit of a bigger systems approach to movement well he was one of the guys that blew mm. this whole system apart like just showed the fallacies of what we was what we were doing to people um and it was brilliant you know like it it was brilliant and um and he still is brilliant but but he he really did like yeah really pave the way to what we've got now i mean what we've got now is just so exciting like you know um i don't know i use i use old systems too so i use osteopathy in the cranial field which is a very specific type of osteopathy that definition of osteopath is a bunch of people who disagree so some osteopaths really like using cranial techniques and others don't i really do and i use like the the original form of it um yeah. which we can go into if you want but i also like recently started using the oov you know mm. you guys use the yeah. oov have you seen that no double ov the oov.com a, a mate of mine teaches um those courses and he showed me a bit of stuff and i'm like wow this is awesome it's an amazing training and diagnostic tool so it's just like i'm just like wow and you know what you guys do the movement stuff i like, that just blows my mind. I can't even do a handstand, but it's just like, um, you know, what, what, what people are doing and how um, collectively and breath work, like, man, like how breathing is now coming in. Yeah, there was Wim Hof, but all, you know, recently yeah. that James Nestor book yeah. has really blown the lid like across the world on the importance of breathing. And I mean, that's a thing. If we could get, if we can get people to breathe well, breathe through the nose, lip seal, tongue up, you know, we we change the world. We literally change the world with that. And so it's it's just like there's so much possibility. My my biggest issue with it is, yeah, niching it down enough to go like, okay, <laughs> these are my little things I play with. Um, but yeah, it's mega exciting. And and I I, I I I play with lots of things. Like I was exposed to kinesiology and. Um, you know, dentistry, a lot of dentistry. So I'll do things like have people stand on one leg, you know, um, put one arm out, push on the arm, they go weak, chuck a mm. tongue in the other side of it. I blew this guy away yesterday, put the tongue in the other side of the cheek and then he went strong mm -hmm. and he's like, what? Stop it. do. <laughs> it's just like, so that's, yeah, it's just like scraping the surface of what, what this vessel mm -hmm. is capable of, you know, like it's just, it's just so yeah. it's really exciting yeah Tim, it's, well, it's I, just, I find. Yeah. yeah no it, i don't know if that answers the i'm just going to get but... you to clarify a couple of terms for people who are listening because mm. th there's lots of now and i think this is where um the space is probably going to go and uh, and it'll be we're getting very specific in our fields i think um as we start to find the bits that we kind of like resonate with um if someone was going to go and see a physiotherapist or an osteopath or a chiropractor and, and, and just in the kind of the, in the traditional sense of you're obviously broadening out what it means to be an osteopath now from from where it probably was 10 years ago in terms of the things that you said you, you're playing with just what's the difference between those things mm -hmm. and, and why would people kind of choose between them yeah and there's fields i mean it's tricky to answer too because there's fields mm -hmm. within those fields 
So like there's hospital based physiotherapists who do like this, you know, some of them do just stunning work in, mm, yeah. in acute care, you know, ICU, like voiding people's lungs and I don't know, all this sort of amazing stuff that would just freak me out. I'd be like, Whoa, you know, um, and, and um, you know, injury rehabs, you know, uh, neuro rehab, all that sort of stuff. So I tend to find in a nutshell that ph- physiotherapy is a very, um, definitely comes from the evidence-based model. Um, and that's its that's its heritage and that's its history. Um, it tends to be not all. This is the thing. Like, how do you define one human being? You know, how do you find one osteopath? But it tends to be more based on okay, um, here's the acute injury. Yeah. We treat those structures, um, and we look at all physios. <laughs> I got a joke. All physios look at glutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but <laughs> that's just a joke. In any physios <laughs> listing, that's a joke. It applies to strength and um, conditioning coaches as well. My so they're like ties with the same brush. Oh, of think course. We, yeah, yeah. Think yeah. glutes. Think <laughs> glutes are activation. That's it. That's it. Um, I always ask mm. the question: Why? Why not? Why aren't they activating? Because that that that's a that's a pretty uh, to me. It's <laughs> anyway, we can go down that track. But uh, chiropractic is is different. Again, they they have philosophies and there's a couple of different philosophies within that but they generally mostly work off the nervous system so they're looking at how the nervous system's in how the nervous system is Mm. impeded yeah and so they have various windows into that and they do you know i've been exposed to a lot of uh, what they call applied kinesiology in cairo and that that's pretty wild stuff like using the body muscle responses to read and uh, um, essentially ask questions of the body um, and then osteopathy is this funny thing that no one really understands <laughs> that it's actually a growing field. It's the fastest growing manual therapy. Um, Wait, what's the, where's the name country. come from? Like what but, does. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it, I was going to say, uh, we're a little bit snobby in osteopathy because we reckon it's the first manual therapy. So there was a guy over a hundred years ago, AT still, who was a medical doctor in the U S and he came up with the name, so osteo meaning bone and p- p- pathy yeah. meaning pathology. So he he was really looking at bones, but he was he looked at a lot more. I mean, he over a hundred years ago he was saying by the fascia live and by the fascia die. He was talking about fascia, and that was when you know it was not yeah. even considered a thing. It was considered something that you just throw away when you do a cadaver study. You know, it's not even important. But now we know that fascia is like everything so it's like probably <laughs> yeah. one of the key yeah. most important you know s- substances in the body it's it's an incredible connective tissue so he knew that a hundred years ago you know he he would go out and just talk to what he called the maker so he'd just sit down and meditate and channel stuff basically if you really come down to it he was a mystic and then so he founded this school of osteopathy and it took off i think it was sort of around the turn of the 18 to 1900s i can't tell you the exact dates i'm not a i'm not a um, (laughs) scholar enough yeah historian enough but he was pretty rad that dude and then and then sutherland one of his students developed what we call osteopathy in a cranial field and he taught some people and they taught some people and those people taught my teacher and he taught me so it's a really like direct line for me i really hold that like Mm. as a strong value in my practice um, so that's where osteopathy came from. But really the premise of it is that um, function and structure uh, are interrelated. So one of the other definitions of an osteopath is a manual therapist that you go and see, it works on everything except what hurts. See, I've seen you know, what you yeah. came for. If you come in for so the I've shop. been alongside when I first got introduced <laughs> to an osteopath, I was probably, I was working with an athlete prior to London 2012 and we were at Alicante as a Spanish guy. And um I would go in and, and I came from a very sort of like strength and conditioning, which is from a, uh, the, the organization that I trained with is quite sort of clinical in, in its approach as well. So very much on, on muscular function mm. and, and the musculoskeletal system. And then I go in there and this guy is like poking around. This guy comes like one of the athletes go, hamstring's a bit tight. And he's like poking around the forearm and, on, and he's like doing some stuff to like the back of the, the hand. And he's like, pain pain and the guy's like, yeah 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 pain and all of a sudden do something go pain go no pain <laughs> like, just do. i was like what well, you don't even touch his hamstring how do you fix that that's <laughs> just like playing around with his armpit yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's a classic. I would, I, would, classic. I just go, I can't work out how this the is. The cool thing. Like, What's this guy doing? This just must be voodoo. But no, it's so cool. It's really cool to see. It's, it's amazing. What's cool? What, What's cool about it too is like you can be like one of my good friends is a visceral osteopath. So she basically so sore yeah, neck, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. your liver, like or sore something. Yeah, that's 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 the bit, you know, the um I don't know, triangular ligament, you know. <laughs> it's like what? What do you how do you know this stuff? And she 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 does visceral osteopathy really well. Um you can do cranial, you can do you can do musculoskeletal type osteopathy, you can do manipulative. A lot of people just, you know, do uh, become really good mm. at cracking the the um, facets and the joints and stuff so it's it's really broad you can do strengthening conditioning with osteo i find it's challenging i've got i'm working Um, with a guy at the moment who's like being through it like chiro physio osteo and he's like the one thing i've not tried is really fixing this thing through movement um and i I sort of like looked at him Mm. move and his his screen is like really well um but he's getting this kind of like pain around his rib area and he's struggling with rotation and side bending injury history like yada yada but it's um what I think is hard for people is how do they find their way to the right person now? Mm. Like when you've got sort of these underlying things where you've got, well, it, you could might be able to fix it by looking at one different side of thing, but you've got somebody doing visceral osteopathy. Is that the right person? It's, it, I think that's probably leading back to the question I asked before. We've got such a broad um, array of practitioners kind of become very special in certain areas, but it's super difficult to mm. stick it all together because each one of those areas is quite specialist and, and complex. And I just, mm. um, I don't know where we go from here with that in terms of people actually getting the right support from the right people. Uh, Yeah, like I'm getting a little bit tingles because that dentist that I used to work for, he passed away now. And um, But I'll tell you one thing, Tim, he Mm. was the master of that. So uh, I'll I'll tell you how he did it if you want. Yeah, what what he had was like on his desk, he had a big, you know, the business card holders. Like he had heaps of them. Like, so he he had whole of Sydney, he was practicing in Sydney, he had the whole of mm. Sydney networked, right? He knew every practitioner, like he knew a physio that I did some work with too, Gavin, who was really good with feet. So if he had someone with a foot issue that he thought was driving things, he'd send them to Gavin. If he had someone or with a bike with the, he thought had a psychosocial problem, he'd have like all these psychotherapists, mm. psychologists, counsellors in his stack of cards, right? The way he got to figure out who he'd send them to was using muscle testing. So he'd ask the body, basically. Um, but what he did was um, also use muscle reflex testing, which I use a lot to this day. And that gives you like a really good window into what's right. what the narrative is, you know, what's what, what story the body's got to tell. But you, you don't have to go straight to the, the, the bit that's going to cause the most trauma. You sort of work mm. your way into yeah. it. Um, if that makes sense so these postural reflex tests will give you an insight if it's to a you know the main issue right now is it ascending or is it descending you know and if it's descending is it relate to the neck the shoulder the jaw c1 or something else and that you can really sort of Mm. just chunk it down you know and go okay the main issue right now is this um, and then he used to use muscle testing, like I said, um, to sort of determine what the priorities were. So he had a structure of, um, and this 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 is used. This is not exclusive to him, but he used to test on this structure of biomechanics or structural, um, biochemical, and then emotional or psychophysical. And also he brought in vibrational. So he brought in a bit of woo in there as well. Um, so he used to be able to go, okay, the, the main priority for this body to be well is structural. No, is biochemical. No, is emotional. Yes. Okay. Is vibrational. Yes. Okay. So then he'd go, okay, like that relates to this and the person to fix it is this. And then he'd pull out a card and go, right. okay, Tim, go and see this guy. And he'd say, I don't want to see you for another three months until you've worked with Jacko and got your issues mm-hmm. sorted out. Yeah. So he, he used to refer, yeah, movement people, everybody, he, and he, he, everybody that worked so well for his practice because people knew when they found a yeah. dental or jaw or upper so cervical right. issue, he yeah. could usually yeah. deal with it. It's, um, mm, yeah, they sent him back. Yeah. And so I think, you know, a good answer, sorry, is, yeah. is collaboration, man, like working together and, and not having the ego just going like, Tim, yeah. like, I can't do this. Yeah. Like, can you have a look at this it's guy? Like having that, lost, having yeah. that network. Yeah. I'm always thinking of him. That guy, it sounds like he's almost like having a, a project manager that's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, 
identify where it is. I'm not going to be the solution, or it might be the solution, but if it's not, it's all these other people I can connect with. I ju- um, I got. I think it's tricky about Jack. Okay, I, yeah. I can make one point. Before you yeah. I think the tricky thing about that, and just reflecting on it, is like it takes a career to get that kind of understanding. Like y- you come in as a strength and conditioning coach, or as a physiotherapist, or as an osteopath, mm. in your basic fundamental training. But then you've got to stay in the game long enough and be open minded enough to actually then start to just go and and branch out of your field. And it's that's like. Yeah, that's that's an, that's a certain level of career endurance and maintaining inquisitiveness, or inquisitivity. That's a word yeah. that um, I, I think few, not enough people have. Like you, you can become so channeled and boxed in. Um, so yeah, I, well, I guess what I'm saying with that call is like it, I, I love talking to people like you because you're just pushing the, to the pioneers and linking mm-hmm. it together, and just what can we do in our lifetime to contribute a bit more to where we next the next generation can go on and, and understand healthcare and, and getting people well effectively which is yeah. our job. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And that's what, that's why I said I, I did things backwards. So I had to, I had to see, I could see those links, but people would always ask me the question, yeah, yeah but what are you? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, Damn label. It. Don't label me. I can't avoid this. Can't, can't avoid this anymore. Just, I'm going to have to go back one to phrase school, before, Just yeah, start you like, telling people you're a, you're a mystic. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Sounds good. Yeah. laughs> I am. Yeah, um, it it, Tim used the same. Tim said <laughs> then uh, about open-mindedness, and I'm just wary that there will be some people potentially listening to this podcast. Maybe it's the first time they listen to the podcast, or they're just relatively new and they've not, or just in their own mindset, they've just not come uh, or been exposed to like some wider views on like how the body functions and this and this idea of like all this other stuff is potentially like, well, this is this is quite a lot and. I think we'd all probably agree there's so much we don't even all this stuff you're talking about there's there's going to be like a whole heap a whole heap of stuff that like we still don't know um about the body and that for um hmm. you sort of you, you started answering this question because I was going to I was going to say like giving a bit of um explanation in layman's terms of like how are some of those things happening and and, and what you're doing there was describing I thought it might be an interesting one um of that uh, that tooth scenario you were talking about that can you in layman's terms try and convince somebody that doesn't believe like i don't know what the mechanism is for that but i'm on board with going like i i i'm on board with the idea that that i'm not close that i'm like that could be something um but for that person with a blown up shoulder like mm. what is the link between the tooth and his shoulder and for the record i recently had a tooth taken out and my body does feel is a bit better shoulder Oh. Uh, my shoulder directly <laughs> wasn't an issue on that side but my um yeah i had a tooth that needed to come out it should have come out a long time ago i think but anyway what what could be how can someone's yeah. tooth be linked to their shoulder is it possible to explain that in layman's terms and try to Im- imagining someone's being a bit skeptical about this yeah um it's it's a funny question because I'm trying to think through it in like I'm almost like um, got PTSD from practical exams. Oh, sorry, yeah. It feels if, like it's too, if, it's too, if it's too hard, <laughs> I can ask you what you had for breakfast. Or... <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. It's a good question. So, I just know so, someone will be so, sat okay, here going so, um, BS. Like, do you know what I mean like how is yeah, that? What, no, uh, like, yeah. Oh, let's let, yeah. Well, let's talk about it. So, so the motor nervous system. Okay. So you've got your sensory and your motor, yeah? Um, So that's, you know, controlling movement, okay? Um, Voluntary and involuntary. So what is the most complicated thing we do as human beings? Neurologically most complicated thing we do. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. Yeah, That's the side on the pole, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's 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 easy comparatively this thing takes a good you know it takes a it takes about 18 years to really master and then you can start it's got to be around the brain hasn't it surely like just thinking and i'm, I'm thinking something neural that develops over the amount of time some it involves thinking it involves it's thinking getting close he's making yeah. his work jacket I, i'm I getting know. ptsd now he's, i don't know i'm like <laughs> yeah, <I reckon>. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I yeah. could have done this with my teachers. <laughs> um, no, so so there's something we, we think and then we use breath and then we use complex arrangements of the tongue and the lips. Talking. And also, oh, right. yeah, exactly. So speech is actually 
neurologically that's why it takes so long to learn right so like my my oldest kid is 18 she's she's very articulate um and of course <laughs> and um and my youngest is about to turn three and she's just learning you know she's really trying but she's she you know she's stringing the words together it's three yeah. years of work you know listening and babbling and and trying to trying to like cognitively make sense of yeah. her thoughts and then articulate her needs you know um, and so that's tough. That's why when, if you do a day of yeah. talking, if you run a workshop, you know, you haven't, you haven't done any physical exercise, yeah. but you're just completely knackered, you know, it's because you've been on your feet thinking, coordinating breath um, and lip, yeah. face and tongue through a nerve in the side of the head, you know, the trigeminal nuclei. So, so that works in concert with a bunch of other cranial nerves to, to, to create this and your vocal cords to create this symphony that that we mm. just take for granted. We can sit here and, and jam on a podcast, but that's actually tough. Yeah. And then, then you've got chewing and swallowing. Okay. That's life or death stuff. <laughs> and so when you chew, you, you need, you need feedback coming, coming from the teeth. Okay. Um, and also how the teeth interact with the food. Yeah. So how, what, what feedback's coming to the brain to say actually mm -hmm. what you're eating. And that actually sends a message to your stomach to tell you what to get ready for, mm -hmm. what nutrients to get ready for. Um, texture of food's really important. And we can go into that, how that's starting to be lost, yeah, you know, yeah. especially in kids. Kids aren't, don't feel textures of foods. They don't chew hard. They get this squishy crap, you know. Um, yeah. That's a whole nother story. But chewing and swallowing is life or death. Right, so you have a lot of neuropower that monitors that stuff, and then you've got the breathing. Okay, so your body will do whatever it can do to to compensate for your breathing and your chewing and your swallowing and even your speech. So that takes a lot of brain power, and for the motor nervous system, it's somewhere around kind of thirty eight to forty something. You know, around thirty eight percent. That's what Tony used to quote anyway. He got off other people, but. Yeah, so so yeah. so this you know the smallest of things can make a bit, you know have you ever got a hair uh, oh, popcorn yeah. you know you have popcorn and like oh. two hours later you've got that little bit that's stuck on your tooth drives you crazy it's super super sensitive area right so if you've got a great gaping great hole in there you've got you were talking about afrinephrine inputs before you that that for, because we're doing lay terms that's things going into the brain and how the brain mm. processes and does things coming out of it yeah so you've got a big hole in your occlusion which is super super sensitive and super important to your highest order um, functions then you've got you've got a really aberrant afferent signal coming back something going back to the brain saying hey there's really something missing here there's also things like the teeth are piezoelectric so when they come together they let off a small charge and that puts a vector through your brain but that's a whole other thing um, and your occlusion how stable your occlusion is affects the, the the cervical vertebrae big time and also how you breathe at night and um and how you use your pharynx and your airways, which is related mm. to the breathing piece that I was saying. Okay, so your neck will compensate. If your neck has to compensate because your mouth's not right, because that's a highly, highly sensitive system, your neck might your neck might flatten and then it'll go forward. Okay, so if you have a forward head posture because your cervical spine's flattened, yeah. what's that going to do to your shoulder? Okay, it's going to change your thoracics. And that's going to change your shoulder position. It's going to change the way you breathe. It's going to change your diaphragm. Your diaphragm's critical to shoulder position. It's critical to yeah. rotation. Blah blah blah. And then, then you, you know, you, then no. you've got a glute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Week, week so, do, so do some glute bridge. So if I do some glute bridges, but my tooth, my tooth grow back. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Your teeth. No, well, it's good. Is... Or tooth, Jacko. But it's adding. It's adding some. Um, <laughs> It's like it's basic. It, 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 I'm seeing it as a as depth on terms of of stuff going like so. Someone saying a forward head posture isn't isn't good, and that can affect the shoulder. And like uh, the pecs are tight, and you know whatever you know. Talking about those things, it's it's for me. It's going like hmm. when it's not saying that that's wrong, but it's saying like the root cause of what's making that thing happen is not directly in there that's a consequence of something else something of a bit of a, a higher order and that will answer questions i think for people yeah. you're not going to have like the immediate solution but 
if someone's been had an issue with X and they've been treating it by trying to do the right things of da 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 da, loosening off this muscle or strengthening that, da, and it's just not really making any progress. That in itself is telling us you aren't treating the root cause, or it's a better for a little bit, and then it just goes back to normal. Like it just shows us that we're not treating the root cause, and that we mm. might have to open up our minds to the root cause of it could be something flipping so far out of your comfort zone or so far out of what your brain can or what your mind can currently accept could be possible that you'll probably dismiss it you know because you mentioned your the like uh, yeah. something it could be to do with your liver or like it could be something that's like deep inside that you can't even like you're gonna have to treat it very differently and i think that um I guess I'm, I'm talk. I start to talk faster as I get a little bit passionate because I've had a conversation with someone uh, recently where it was it was exactly this. They were having they they've had some issues, and their their whole turn of phrase was like, basically, nothing I do helps. And then it was like, mm. uh, and they, they they were talking about the the situation. I was like, well, uh, from my understanding, could maybe this? No, no, it's definitely not that. I've tried that. Could be that. No, I've tried that. It's not that. Could be that. Tried that. Not that. And then, and it was like, but so, but what are you doing? It's like, well, I'm just doing what I've always done. I'm like, well, you, you're definitely not going to get. <laughs> it's definitely not going to get any better if you do what you've always done. But their mind was very much closed off to like trying to approach it in a different way. And so, like, I imagine this. I don't know if this is a question or not, but. Um, a client when they come to you they've probably already got to that point in their mind of like it's something else whereas for some people to get to work with mm. someone like you they've got to get past that that phase in their mind of going like it actually could be something that i'd have no idea about that's scary for people yeah 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 i mean it's, that's such a rich little dialogue you just rolled out in my I'm mind sorry. we like, could be here all day couldn't we <laughs> Um, no, no. I'm going to book great. a session it's with great. you after it's this, like, by the way. Like journey. whatever you charge, yeah, it's like I'm, we're going to we're going to have a chat about <laughs> my tooth, of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we must. Um, but there's a couple. There's one. There's a few. There's three things I want to discuss, and one's a, yeah. one's a case, if I may. He's given me permission to share it. Um, to talk about him, obviously not without his name, but he has given me permission to talk about his case. Um, but one thing he said was um, about the body not working oops have i gone off or am i right? there are, we, are you coming back yeah oops yeah, uh, yeah no you're good you're good uh, my yeah, computer yeah. was doing something funny well yeah, the, 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 those things that you talked about like the issue like let's say it's the shoulders rounding in and you were saying stretch the shoulders well and you, you said something really important which was the body's working yeah and and that's that's critical to understand is that if your shoulders are rounded and you're looking at them going or your head your for you've got a forward head posture, that's very functional. It's meant to be that way. Your body's put you put itself into that position for a very specific reason. A lot of time with cervical, it's because of airway um, and and dental issues, but 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 it's a functional adaptation, you know. Um, and, and it's doing doing it for a very specific reason. So if you yeah. start going in and poking and prodding and stretching and carrying on, yeah, you you you, you, you kind of it's like you you're trying to wag the dog yeah. with the tail, you know. So you have to you do have to go back, but you have to understand that um, the the what you think is a dysfunction. My point is, what you think is a dysfunction yeah. is not I think that, a function. Yeah, I've, Asymmetry I've thought about this recently, only normal, only yeah? very recently. Like in my mind, when I'd see something that's that would be, I'd been taught of. Say, so see myself, something in my in myself that like I've been taught is like, oh, that's that's a little bit dysfunctional. I'd see it very like negatively, and then I'd be looking at my body and how it's functioning negatively, rather than as you say, it's like my body's doing an amazing mm. job to like like carry on doing what it's doing, and yeah, it is it will have uh, adapted for like that function. It might not be how it was necessarily meant, but it's like, rather than thinking about our bodies negatively, like almost giving it a pat on the back for like, well, great job for like, just not packing up altogether and just like dying. Like, um, and then I don't know, for me, that's, that's 
quite a, been quite a, a shift in mindset rather than seeing everything as bad, dysfunctional, bad, 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 bad. That's it. Yeah. And that's what the physios have taught us massively. Like they, they the physios are so good at doing their research, right? Osteos, we just sort of hold ourselves up in a clinic room and, and just kind of read heaps of books and don't talk to people that much. But physios get out there, measure everything and publish it. And they've done heaps of work on pain neuroscience education, which is exactly that. Because if you say, oh, my, I can never, you know, my tibia is yeah. twisted, my tibia is twisted. That's, a, that's what they call a dim, a danger in me um, um, cue. So when you do that, when you, when you say like, oh, yeah. me bad knee or me, me crook shoulder or whatever it is, um, you actually get a mediated inflammation response in that place. <laughs> so inflammation, as you know, is going to be the complete opposite yeah. to, to, to healing. Yeah. So it's like you, you've got to look at those dysfunctions as oh, body's compensation so it can, so it can function and, and I can live my amazing life. It's like, but you know, I wouldn't mind addressing that, that um, shoulder yeah, yeah, let's heal it up, you know. All of a sudden that creates a sim, a safety in me, you know. Um, and, and that's – that's the physios now rate that first, um, exercise second, manual therapy third. That's how they see the priority of treatment should mm. be. So pain neuroscience education, um, getting the words changed, people understanding the mechanisms of pain mm. and that pain is produced in your brain and not at the knee. You know, sometimes that's a paradigm shift for people. Um, so yeah, that whole thing of, yeah, my body's working, it's working. Like it's my posture might not be on the plumb line, but that's ideal for me right now. That's a very powerful place to, 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 to start from. Um, and then the other part was Paul check, go back to Paul. He developed that totem pole and that's a really cool graphic for anyone who hasn't seen that. Um, Paul checks totem pole and he, he sort of went like, looked at it from a survival point of view and went, well, breathing's the most important. So the body will compensate to maintain breathing and airway, then jaw, then vision, then vestibular system, then upper cervicals, um, and it goes down visceral and it ends up with what he calls the slave joints, which is the spine and the limbs, you know? So pelvis, um, the, the, the ilia, um, knees, ankles, feet, elbows shoulders yeah so he sort of says any of these things up the top have an issue you're gonna you, they, they okay. might present the compensation will present right down the chain and and that's what as he says that's what most people spend all their money on getting their backs popped and their knees mri'd and then you know all this stuff whereas really you've got to clear those higher yeah. um order um compensations first yeah it's a and um yeah, no, I, I guess mm. it's a challenge, isn't it? Because it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a good, before having a, a broader set of skills is going to be is going to be really useful, and there is always going to be a role for a physiotherapist because they get results right in terms of there there are there is a, a, physio, say it's a musculoskeletal physiotherapist. I've done a lot of work in sport. They get people back in the pool and they get them training or, or on the athletics track and, and whatever. There's a, there's a role for the strength and conditioning coach. I think the way that I kind of see this playing mm -hmm. out is that you, we just need to be much more diverse in our understanding of screening selection. So how do we actually identify what the problem is? Because it could be, I'm going to go back, it could be a glute weakness, right? It could be <laughs> like, that we, we could just yeah, fix that and then actually we're, we're, we're pretty good Like because we, we've seen that and we get results with people. I think the one thing I'm, I'm just conscious of is people start to listen to conversation and, and we're talking at a level where we're kind of quite comfortable with embrace, embracing and enjoy the complexity of it. It's actually can become really overwhelming. They're like, mm. oh, but I've been seeing this person mm. and, and is that, should I even be bothering going to my personal trainer? Because if it's not even like muscular and it's actually like something to do with my breathing, then I'm, they don't know about that. But I think it's, um, yeah, it's, I guess not all problems are super complex. Sometimes there is a very simple fix for things. Um, and, and I guess it's where we, I, I, I look back at myself and go, well, how, do, how are we screening people? How am I screening people to identify what, I, what is the priority on the strength and conditioning program, for example? Like, it's, is it going to be some breath work before we go and do anything else in the session? Because I've got to do something to correct that before I can expect the body to go, do you know what, let's just like, I'll give you a little bit to play with now. I can, you can have a little bit more strength or you can have a little bit yeah. more stability or postural control because the diaphragm is taken care of. I'm not in this stress state anymore. Um, and the same with the visual system. But the, I think the challenge for us as practitioners, I'm, I'm speaking as a, as a practitioner to practitioner now, it's um, 
it's the time to, to go through it all. And, and it's um, like, how do we, someone's coming in because they want to get strong and I'm going to get a slide down and, and do this like woo-woo thing. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know what the solution is um, nice. because people can't necessarily afford to have lots of different practitioners. So I guess what I'm saying is like, if we are all a little bit more skilled in a little bit, in a few more areas, at least we can then identify correct to a point and when we run to the end of our experience or end of our our knowledge we then know the people to refer to and yeah. we've had some success in this area you now need to go here because they can take you to the next level which is beyond where i'm capable it's of having those you. professional and networks that, isn't it come back hmm. yeah yeah it is but this but the thing is that we're t- we, we get connected with people who are like us right like we we, we, yeah. we connect rather because than we're yeah. kind of in our it's not an echo chamber but we're linked because we've got a similar sort of mindset people go you should talk to that person because they'll really resonate with what you're saying um, the, the challenge I think with it is, is like, how do you find people like that? That there's, it's not, that's not the, it's not the norm. I would say out mm-hmm. there in in health wellness care at the moment, people are doing great stuff, but it's still very mm-hmm. kind of like I feel it's quite pocketed, um, and it's going to take some time. And how do you and how do you find it within yourself, yeah. Tim? I reckon too. You know, like there's a place for everyone in healthcare. Mm-hmm. I reckon, like you know, I I, I have a gym out there for a reason but like i i go so far i do pretty basic stuff and then you know, i've got a, a really close friend that's just moved to the area and he's really good with all the functional movement stuff way better than me so it's like great yeah. get off my table get out there you know get out there with him um firstly don't don't have an ego and attachment to what you're doing yeah secondly like you said keep your eyes open and be willing to go like whoa um, I don't understand that. I'd like to, and then and then and also, yeah, I reckon find that practitioner within. You know, it's just like so often we get we get stuck in a in a mode of working. Like I, I do myself. Like I find myself writing notes, and I'm like, why am I writing this? I've I, I've written this like five times now. Why am I doing the yeah. same treatments? And you've got to. Um, I, I feel like um, self reflection in that way is really really key to it you know so that you, you're constantly looking at what you're doing and going am i being the best version of this practitioner that mm. i'm doing that i can be and how can i how can i serve people better and is there a niche of interest that that's going to do that that's going to um that's going to um uh enable me to contribute yeah. more and I more think the gold you know? standard. Yeah, uh, go on, i think i think that's the I was no, no, going okay. to uh, say that for me, like we obviously do quite a lot of work in sport with like our interdisciplinary teams. And, and it, that's like, for me, probably going to be is a gold standard because we're never all going to be experts in all areas. But how does the, the guy or girl on the street come in and access an, an interdisciplinary team where people are going to look at the case, sit around a table and go, what are our options? And, and this is the best course of action. Yeah. And, and, and that's possible. Like we could do that it's just going to cost a lot of money. Like it's not, you can't you get those brains together for, for uh, everyone's basically like often selling time and expertise. It's a, but it's a nice problem to think about mm. how could that be done for people in a way. Mm. Yeah. There's a crew of people down the road that do that called the health lodge. So they have integrative doctors, mm. naturopaths, osteos, physios, and they literally do that, sit around a table and, and go, okay, We've got Jacko's Where is it? tooth. <laughs> it's just glutes on, on. What are we going <laughs> to do? You know, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, and that, and I think that is like it's a beautiful way to practice. Um, can, is it feasible yeah. though? That's really you know, is it feasible for the everyday person? No, and that's why we need that non-ego. So, you know, I, I had a guy here the other, yesterday, and I was just like, wow, I've never seen a rib cage like this. And my mentor happened to be out there. I said, George, can you come and look at this rib, like? I don't know what to yeah. do. <laughs> you know, it's like to be able to, and and that's a that's a key principle back to osteopathy of especially osteopathy in the cranial field, and and this is I think this is a bit of a key answer too, and it's a key answer for people that are looking for a practitioner to guide them, is that like we really respect the body's ability to heal itself. Yeah. yeah? So Jack goes missing a tooth, but he can still do all his mm. his flag thing and and his all this movement work, you know, like the body can work around that. Maybe something will happen, maybe something won't, you know. Um, but the body has this innate intelligence and its innate ability to heal itself. So 
it's not me fixing the person. Yeah. You know, I hate that word when people say, yeah. oh, yeah, I fixed yeah. their knee. No, you didn't. Their yeah. knee fixed their knee, right? Um, and what that requires is humility. You need to be able to sit with the body, with someone else. Like the body is magnificent, you know, like any person that comes to see you is a, is a treasure to you as a practitioner. You know, it's, it's such a blessing to sit with someone at the table and, and put your hands on them. It's a privilege, you know, uh, and it's, and, and it's in, incredibly humbling to be able to feel changes in their system and that they tr- their system trusts you to initiate that change. Yeah. But that's all we're doing, particularly in cranial osteopathy. We're initiating their own healing mechanism. Um, and, I, and, that, and that requires no, a, a, a deep humility and a deep gratitude. And I think if you're looking for a practitioner, that's one quality yeah. that you mm-hmm. might want to be sussing out because they're the ones who will who will go you i don't know i don't know but but tim is really good with shoulders i think you should i'm gonna i'm gonna give you his card i want you to go see him he'll give me some input back because i'm a bit stuck with this you know people will just go whoa you're actually trying to help and you like they'll they'll be your biggest fan yeah, they'll be your biggest fan forever. You'll never be short of patience. Mm-hmm. Like scarcity is like one of I'm the worst. I'm glad you mentioned that about yeah. in terms of like the body healing itself. And I think that that trust, when we are as, as a client or if you're searching these things out to rather than, because it's quite common to go, particularly like when you're, if you're, when you're a kid and you're poorly, your parents take you to the doctor because the doctor will make you well. So we're like, but with, I mean, subconsciously, yeah. not on, not in a bat, but we're we're starting to do that thing. So then, as an adult, when you're injured, I'm going to go find the physio or the chiro or the osteo. I'm going to find someone to fix me, and trying to go, trying to mm. understand that no one knows your body better than you. But you've got to start listening to it. Like you can't, you don't know how my body feels. It's impossible for you to know how it feels. You might know more about like how to how to help facilitate that, but I know how my body feels. And it will heal itself. I have to trust the. I have to trust my body rather than trying to, rather than trying to give that trust over to someone else. Um, we are running out of time, though, Cole. Yeah. And you have got your didgeridoo with you. Um, mm. And you've mentioned breathwork a few times. I um, and I imagined how to. I there's got to be something to do with the didgeridoo and the breathing side of things. Can you give us a little demonstration and just a, a whistle stop <laughs> tour of like the importance of of that? Yeah, well, oh, what a uh, well work. potentially we've got time for breath work, Jack. Yeah, we how the two? Hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> That's part two. Um, yeah, no, yeah. The like, did you do? Give us a give us a blow. Well, yeah, okay, let's do it. Um, we'll see how yeah. well sounds. If people want a visual, it's on. We're on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah. Sounds yeah. like you're farting. Very good. I like that. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's cool. That's glad. Yeah. <laughs> that's. Yeah. See, I well, that's that's a lot of exhaling, right? Like, if someone's very poor at breathing, yeah, presumably yeah, they're going to find it I? nigh and impossible to be able to do anything like that. If they're very bad at breathing, they they with poor CO two times they they can't extend exhales mm. well. Yeah, and that's that's one of the benefits. So there's a lot of benefits to it. That's one of them, extended exhale. Then, you know, you're taking a very, I don't know if you heard my breath yeah. there, a very quick inhale, yeah? So you inhale, your exhale's yeah. long, your inhale's very quick. So you actually end up essentially, cre- and you create a, you keep a store of air in yeah. your lungs, like you kind of keep them a bit inflated. So you actually end up kind of storing a bit of CO2. But also the, um, what's what's been shown and hypothesized with the, yeah. you know with the drone is that they, they there was a study in bmj about didgeridoo playing in sleep right. apnea and it's a it's efficacy um in treating sleep apnea and one of the things that was hypothesized is that that low drone tone actually tones the, the mm, pharynx right. 
the muscles of the pharynx, your wall, which helps to keep them open when you're nice. asleep. So that's pretty amazing. So you've got you've got tone, you've got breath, and then you, as you heard, yeah. you've got rhythm as well. Um, and it can be, you know, one of the beauties of breath work, and I always come back to this is, you know, uh, are you being breathed or are you breathing? You know, and if if life's breathing you and you're breathing life, you've got this beautiful symbiotic relationship with life and breath's your access point to that yeah so one of the things you can do once you learn to do that circular breathing it's pretty it's actually pretty easy to learn but you can you can go into a like a, a trance type state if you just can continually repeat the same rhythm so whatever that is like just down 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 you know and just keep going and going and going um, for about after about 10 minutes of that you can go into a bit of a trance state where the sort of brainstem just takes over the breathing and it becomes automatic and this you know you basically end up expressing whatever's on the inside you know um and so so as you might with say holotropics or something like that so it's 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 a very powerful nice. thing actually um and sometimes can be intimidating to people but actually it's it's a beautiful thing because it's it's some of the simplest um, didgeridoo playing is just drone breath drone breath but if you get down to some more complex stuff um, and how the native people of this country use it to convey uh, messages in within the dancing and stuff like that it's it's not not the, it, and how it works with the, their actual spiritual expression man no, it's like it's, there's a lifetime of study in it yeah, there really is. Like, I'm just a beginner and I've been going for 10 years, you know. <laughs> well, we've covered some ground today, Cole. Mm. I've loved it. Um, yeah, when, when know, we, it wasn't entirely sort of um, when we, when we, the contact came through to have, have you on the podcast, I was sort of, it, I wasn't quite sure where the conversation was going to go. But that for me is often one of the best ones because it, yeah. you weren't sort of super niched into one thing where I knew we had to talk about this thing. And it's been, um, yeah, it's been great just to chat as practitioners. <laughs> and I hope that's been useful to people just to sort of, maybe just listening on a conversation between two people having or three people having quite an honest discussion around like just where are we at and what do we know and, and how do we find out more and, and who are the sorts of people that you should be surrounding yourself with if you need help in a certain area and um, don't be afraid to ask questions which feel like they might be a little bit out there because it could be a little bit out there based on what our current understanding of, of healthcare and, and the human body is so thank you so much for that it's been great yeah yeah just keep pushing it stay <laughs> yeah, right it's been uh, it's been enlightening, <laughs> and uh, you'll you'll be hearing from me again. And if people have got any questions, um, uh, or you know want to connect to, connect with you, what's what's the best place for people to to find you, or to get more information? Just come to the come to the website because I don't. Uh, I'm a bit of a freak. I don't. It's have gone off the media. off the radar. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the what's the name of the website? And we'll just just spell it out for people. Yeah. The website and we'll. Hi. Heart palpitation saying it. Yeah, my name. So Cole Clayton, C O L E C L A Y T O N dot com dot AU. We'll put the Aussie we'll put a link in the show notes. notes. Yeah. Yeah. Go have a chat to see if you can make yeah, it better looking Jack, by doing some creating osteopathy. I'm I'm interested yeah. in that. I think there's a part two. <laughs> oh, I think there's a part two where start doing like all the facial the stuff. Face yeah, exercises. Yeah, yeah. I want to get a the yeah, face a, exercise a plate thing put in, in, yeah. your, in your in your in your palate at night to widen it and all that sort of jazz. We we want we need to talk about that separate. That's yeah, going to be we'll that. talk about yeah. that on a part two. I mean, I can show you photos of some stuff of yeah. like, way of 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 changes in people's. I've got, yeah. I've, I've got it's a photo of, I've got an interesting, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've got an interesting photo of Tim actually from, uh, from, from, from a while back. I could show you as well. Yeah, it's got yeah, nothing yeah. to do with facial right, yeah, let's not, let's not do my face on that, I don't think. Um, <laughs> right, Cole, mate, thank you so much for, uh, for, for giving us your time and your wisdom. We'll let you get off to bed now. It must be pretty, uh, pretty late there in Australia. So um, yeah, we'll look forward to chatting again and hopefully we can, uh, there's definitely a round two for sure. All right. 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 Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate in your work and also your time. Cheers, man. Take care. Get out. Do you know what was the biggest takeaways from from me or for me from that podcast, Jacko? <laughs> was the realization, yeah. and this is like and it never hit home before. And it's one of those things we go probably should have recognized that before. You know, when Cole said, "Think about when you get something like stuck between your tooth, like the amount of sensory information that's in your <laughs> yeah. jaw. Like you know, if you bite into an apple, or like worse still, popcorn or." 
built on, for those who understand the, the joys of meat and <laughs> eating dried meat, if that gets stuck in your tooth, particularly the front ones for me, you can't think about anything else. Like you're going to dig that thing no. with your tongue until you basically like wear the end of your tongue down trying to get it out or you've got to go and get some dental floss. Um, I'd never really thought about that before, but that is so annoying. And it just shows how much information the brain is getting from something which is going wrong in your <laughs> mouth. You can't leave it alone, can you? No, no. Um, there's uh, two things for me, but it's sort of like one thing. And it's about, <laughs> I am just like, that's just wet my appetite and I want more. So I am like, I'm, I'm bang game for a, uh, um, a part two where we look at like some of the facial movements and like uh, working on our tongue and all that sort of jazz. Uh, so much so that uh, I ain't even going to wait for us to actually do the part two. I am booking a session with, over Zoom with him and I'm going to like test out how terrible my uh, my tongue strength is and um, try to sort out my uh, my missing tooth, uh, which I've had a tooth removed and I need to speak to an expert like him. So I'm going to I didn't want to take up the podcast asking just put two two personal questions about my my missing tooth. So uh, I'm genuinely going to do that and looking forward to it I'll re- i will report back on later podcasts i told you what to do about that tooth as well didn't i get a gold uh, one. Oh, get, get a gold one no you can't make you can't put metal in your teeth yeah in your mouth yeah, metal in your mouth no. about, i just want you to have a gold tooth <laughs> we get, is there not some kind I, mean, of like- I want to get one that which you know just one way it's like you, you you can pop it in and pop it out and then i could just get a few different colors that, that's that could work as long as it's sort of like organic vegan ethically produced like something like that Gold. yeah there's not gonna yeah. get something like that that, that for me would be i don't know if that's possible win. is it I i'll look into it, it, must be. it on google i'll get like bamboo or something or, yeah kind of some organic that is, uh, yeah what it's made of is less important than the color <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I hope you enjoyed that podcast. Um, we might well get Cole back on for a part two. Um, I actually, my th- I've reflected on this was like, I was so interested in just picking Cole's brain about the general complexity of physiology that I probably steered it away from where Jacko would also have liked the conversation to have gone, which into, as he says, it was into yeah. a bit more of the detail around facial stuff and breathing and, and that. <laughs> so maybe we get, we, Cole might enjoy the illustrious crew of people who have been invited on for a part mm. two. So, the do play. Until then. But let us know. Yeah, if you yeah, know, but, uh, just, yeah, give us yeah let us know um message email whatever find a way send a send a message in a bottle get a, get get that out to us if you are wanting to call, get us cold back on we can make some funny faces together i don't live near the sea how, how am i going to get that message in a bottle maybe i'll move to the sea uh, so that people can send canals a message in a bottle canals. that then we'll take or pigeons carry a pigeon send a pigeon yeah um, right, let's not get into that because it's probably not at all relevant. Um, until next time, keep enjoying your physical, enjoying and exploring your physical potential <laughs> with movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed.